we have five dollars from Blackjack Gabbiani. A haiku goes here, but it is yawning o'clock. Pacific time. Whoa. That's a mood. It is really early for me, too. And it's 1025. <laughs> Uh, with that, friends, we are ready. Give it up. Next up is Paul Saltine. I think I'm live. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Guys, I'm Paul Saltine, and I'm going to be running Castle of Illusions, starring everybody's favorite mouse, Mr. Mickey Mouse. Um, just a, It's an action platformer, early release Genesis game. I think we're just going to jump right on in, so I'm going to give you a countdown from three, and we can start that timer. Three, two, one, go. So, all right, the first thing I'm doing is we skip over the entire story of the game. It's a very Disney story. I can fill you in very quickly here. So an evil witch by the name of Miserable has kidnapped Minnie Mouse. And I think they're going to do some, like, Freaky Friday thing where they swap bodies. So, Miserable turns into Minnie Mouse and, quote-unquote, she's going to turn Minnie Mouse into an ugly old witch, which I think, first of all, is a little hard on yourself there, Miserable. I think you're fine. Um, and Mickey Mouse has to collect a bunch of gems for some reason to make it all the way to save her. Uh, first thing you're going to notice right away... For the entirety of this run, I am jumping with Mickey Mouse literally whenever I can. Uh, the reason for that being is that he's a very, very slow walker. Uh, he's pretty quick when he jumps, so we're going to try to utilize this as much as possible. We're also going to skip these vines here, even though this butterfly can be a bit of a troll and he's okay. All right. I was going to be really mad if the uh, middle butterfly there actually trolled us and I died right away. So, okay, things are looking up. We're good. Uh, first stage here is basically just a lot of intro to kind of get you used to, you know, the platforming, the enemy mechanics, uh, the item mechanics, all that kind of stuff. So a bunch of very short sections. And this game is very forgiving when it comes to uh, health management and whatnot. Uh, you start off with three health, uh, and if you go at or below that, every time you go to a next room, uh, they're going to refill your health for you, at least on normal difficulty. Uh, but if you manage to collect more than three, uh, the game will let you hold on to that moving forward. And already we are on our way to the... Uh, first boss. Nice and quick. Alright, so something I'm going to do at the end of every stage in this game, I'm going to do two things. Number one, I'm going to get rid of all of my special items. Number two, I'm going to try to finish the stage with as little health as possible. Uh, the reason for that being, at the end of each stage, there is a score countdown, and you get extra points for additional items or additional health you have. So, we're going to want to try to minimize that. It doesn't save, like, a large amount of time. But it does add up over five uh, score screens. Just like that, we got our first gem. So, yeah, this is the score screen here. So, technical bonus, 1,000 for the one health we have. No secret bonus. Easy stuff. And, uh, okay, we're going to come up on the first run killer of the uh, the game here, so I'm going to just concentrate for a second. I need to get to the top of this room to collect a key as efficiently as possible. Let's see if we can get a nice climb here. Okay, that's the hard part. There are places where we do and don't want to take damage. I'm going to be doing a pretty cool damage boost just up here, since we have enough health for it. Brew one toy soldier, and then you get a double bounce across the other two, kind of speed us up a little bit. And the key. All right, there we go. So 
You think that's the hard part? Now we gotta make our way back down again. So I'm gonna try to be cutting these corners here as quickly as possible. It actually does save a bit of time over uh, how you're, uh, you're normally supposed to do it. You can just kind of walk off. And this room, there is a set of stairs just up there, and we need to have perfect movement to be able to make the cycle. I already think I screwed it up. So let's see, can we make it? All right, no, we're good, we're good. So that, that one can be a little bit tight if you have a way to do it. And like, you know, you miss a jump or you bonk against a block or something, it can screw up the entire cycle. And this little section here, that jello looking stuff is actually jello. And it kind of sucks you down like quicksand. So you don't want to fall down in that. And now we're going to use this clown here to skip a part of the level by getting a little boost up on his ball. And away we go. Uh, so yeah, this next section here is just a little bit of platforming and item shooting, so if we have any donations, uh, now would be a good time to read probably one or two. Absolutely. We have $5 from X Kelsey 231 Let's go, my friend. I love your Mickey runs. Very excited to see you in this GDQ. Uh, thanks, Kelsey. We have $15 from Chaz ML. Amazed to see the two Disney games I never finished as a child being destroyed in less than 45 minutes. Great work from all the runners at this fantastic event. Sweet. I, uh, I actually can't wait for this to be done so I can check out that Lion King run because that game is hard. And uh, <laughs> even as an adult, I do have trouble uh, completing that game. I also uh, use a three button controller, so that really doesn't make it any easier on myself. All right, here we go, boss. Okay, so this guy here is complete RNG. He can ruin your day. So his name is Bopper. He's either gonna jump two or three times before letting you attack. So we're gonna hope for some two cycles here. I'm gonna ask for him to come in twos. That's a good start. Let's see if we can't get any uh, good luck here today. All right, buddy, I like what you're doing. Like that. Oh, I don't like that. Okay, that's fine. Oh, I really don't like that. Get me out of here. All right, so if you jump a little bit too early, uh, the spring can uh, kind of push you out of the way. So I'm trying to get these damage boost hits as quickly as possible. And that's like one risk I do run by doing that. Actually, overall, not bad RNG from Bobber. And there's our second gem. So, okay. We got the good climb. We got a good Bobber. Say we're on PB pace. How we feeling? We're feeling pretty good. We're coming up on run killer number two here. Now it's more RNG. Um, but before we get there, we have a little short section. Uh, this is probably my favorite room in the game. I think the background is uh, beautiful. The music is pretty happy, too. This stage, I think, is meant to be a like a maze where you have to find your way through the exit, but since we know exactly where that is, uh, this lasts about 30 seconds. Let's come down here, and away we go. So in this section here, I am going to try to set up a specific uh, bat manipulation that's going to let me damage boost through a waterfall here. Uh, the waterfalls are one-hit kills. I'm going to try to line up this bat behind me to hit me. And it looks like we got it. And we use our iframes to go through the first uh, one-hit KO water ball, and we jump right over the second one. For some reason, that's allowed. Now we've got to wait for the rest. So my uh, my controller is not doing the best right now. It has been dropping a lot of jump inputs. 
And this is like the one place I don't want it to happen. And we're good. Okay, run killer number two right here. More RNG. So there's going to be a water cycle that comes up and down here. We want slow cycles so we can make these gaps. And already we got a bad fast cycle, so we need this wait before we can continue on. And here again. Okay, we got the slow cycle on this one. All right, one fast, one slow. I'll take that. Oh, we, okay, we almost fell into the river. All right, but we're good, we're good. Boss fight coming up. Not anything too crazy here. I'm gonna try to get a snipe shot on the fourth hit. I'm gonna take our damage, get our HP down to one. And we got the snipe shot. And we got the quick butt shot. And another gem. There we go. Let's, let's keep going. So the next stage is coming up it is my personal favorite stage. Um, one thing I will ask once we get into this stage, chat, if for some reason, some miracle, you have a milk emote, now is the time to spam it. There has to be at least one person out there with one. Uh, and this is actually also another real good time for donations if you have any more. Absolutely. We have a nice $100 donation from No Diggity One. No Diggity, oh. I'm very happy to see Paul on a big stage event yet again. It is impressive seeing your deliberate and consistent approach to speedrunning. Thanks for showing your skills for a great cause. Hope that I hope to see you and the rest of the Sega crew in person next year. Incentive goes to Paul's choice. I believe that was the Nokia ringtones. Ooh, very good choice. Uh, you could probably squeeze in one more if you have it. Sure thing. We have $25 from uh, Deso Pilar. So excited to see this game finally run. This was my childhood. This was my childhood too, or at least a little bit of it. Um, I don't think I was this good when I was a kid though. I think we made it to the stage two and that was it. Okay, so uh, that was pretty easy. The game is just giving us Gems for free now. All right. There is a uh, beat and jump input. That's fine. Okay, so yeah, we are making our way to the Milky Dragon boss. Uh, unlike Bopper, this guy is 100% not RNG. We know his pattern very well. If. Oh, okay, we missed that jump. If. I don't take a hit right away on the boss, we should be able to actually set up a really quick fight, which does look impressive. Okay, gotta make sure that A doesn't snipe us. Alright, we're good. Alright, let's see if we can do it. Alright, so we did take unintentional damage there. Okay, not the best fight in the world, but I'll take it. Um, I do know where he shows up after, like, you're supposed to hit him every time. Though. Sometimes you miss a hit and whatnot. So I do know where he is one cycle after, but I don't know where he shows up after that. So, okay, we got lucky there. Uh, here we go, we're going into the final stage already. Um, this is by far, I think, the hardest stage in the game. Uh, first room's not so bad. I am going to try to conserve my health as much as possible, because uh, things do get a little spooky at the very end of this room. There is like one or two rogue bats that uh, can do damage to you. If you're down to one health, then you, uh, you die and you have to start from the very beginning, and that can take a lot of time. It's okay. It's okay to take one hit there. You take two on those blocks and things start getting dicey. Okay. 
There are a lot of things in this room that do want to hurt you, so like, I do get pretty nervous trying to do this. I'm gonna try to damage boost through this cannonball. We're good. Okay. We should be able to hold on to this extra health here, which is good because, um, you'll see the spooky part here in a second. It's, uh, spooky for a number of reasons. Not only is it the rogue bats... Oh, nope, there goes our HP, never mind. Got spooky again. We got a spooky bridge, too. Okay, okay, we're good, we're good. Oh, man. That bat coming from behind scares me every time. Okay, so a little quick swimming section here before the hardest room in the game. It's the clock tower. Uh, I'm gonna go for two tricks here. One is called the uh, the fast pendulum. So we're gonna try to jump on the pendulum a little bit quicker than we normally would. And then we're gonna try to go for a double bat bounce, which is a little bit risky, because I can die doing it. I can fall to the bottom of the stage trying it. But if I at least gotta give a go. I gotta, I gotta at least try once. I may go quiet here for a minute. I think we're going to be too slow for the fast pendulum. And we get sniped by a rogue bat. That's always fun. Thanks. Taking too much damage. So we can't even go for the... Uh... Oh. We got the backup. We can't go for double bat bounce now because we have too low of a health. Because normally it would uh, entail damage boosting through these crushers, so we are going to have to wait for them. And I'm going to get that safety health just up here. Oh, cog, don't do that to me. Come on. Ugh. Get me out of here. Take a little speed boost off that cog. And uh, there is a rogue bat that can snipe you from off screen, so we throw some candles there. Here comes Clock Tower Oaf. I'm gonna try to set up a quick manipulation on him. Let's see if we get it. I can explain it after. And we got it, okay. So, normally with this boss fight, uh, he swings three times, he'll jump, he'll swing, I think it's three more times, he'll jump, then he'll swing twice. If you, for some reason, you go in and you do damage to him twice really quickly, but you also, like, damage yourself while doing it, he skips one of the jump cycles, so he swings at you five times, and then jumps, and then swings three times. Uh, so it saves a couple seconds, but he can be pretty trolly, so that's not always a given. Look at that, we got all seven of our gems. We've made the Rainbow Bridge. It's time to go fight Miserable. Let's go. So time will be on the fifth hit. Here she is. So she's a little bit of RNG herself. She's gonna teleport around the room. She can either be top, bottom, or the two sides. Top and bottom are a little bit quicker. Um, but it's not really that much of a time save. The opposite side of where you're standing is pretty much the slowest. Thanks, Ms. Rebel. Come on, give us a top and bottom. It's a good start. And one more hit. Ah, there's our top. So we can damage boost here if you have enough health and time. There it is. So Mickey, after all these gems he's collected, pulls out his uh, very own Dragon Ball and turns Miserable into a cute, happy witch. Uh, fun fact, the, the Dragon Ball actually got a good spin-off after this game. Uh, you may have heard of it. And yeah, guys, what was my time there? That actually felt not bad. Your, t your time was an 1823. I'll take that. That's. I was hoping for a sub 1830, so 
Awesome. You got it. Great there job. Go. All right. Well, uh, geez. Okay. A couple shout outs. I'd like to thank Mr. 007, the world record holder of this game. He has been such a great resource. Um, he's been there the whole time. He gives tips. His tutorial for this game is excellent. Uh, and if this is a game that you think you might want to learn, you can drop into our Discord. It's on the uh, speedrun.com page for this game. You can just hop on in. Uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, let us know. We can help you through anything. Um, otherwise, I'd like to shout out the, uh, the Sega crew, dudes like No Diggity, uh, Booster Shane, Reanimation, Faust. They've been here the entire time, you know, taking me under their wing. I much appreciate it. And last but not least, happy birthday, Telus, my buddy. I'll be talking to you later. All right. Well, thank you so much to Paul Saltine for that incredible run. Everyone give it up. Very good. And very nice shirt, by the way. I really liked that shirt. Um, let's go ahead and read a few more donations. We have $5 from Warwick STL. Paul, super thankful I got to catch most of the run. So proud of you get, uh, for getting an amazing game in a GDQ. Don't forget the good ending. Runner's choice. And we have... We have $20 from Anani Mouse. I like that name. Very cute. That just says MSF FTW. Thank you, friend. Don't go anywhere, everyone. We'll be right back with a quick Twitch ad. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2020 Online. We had a great Disney block going on. Next up, we're continuing on with the Genesis block. We had a block inside of a block. Next up is Dagron with Pulse Man. I'm super excited because I actually really love this game. But before we get to there, let's go ahead and have a donation. We have $15 from Melissa219. My boyfriend introduced me to GDQ two years ago. I never heard from it before. It's so much fun to watch. When GDQ is on, we try to watch when we have free time. Fun, fun. Well, thank you for checking us out, and thank you so much for donating to such a great cause. And everyone, let's go ahead and tell you what that cause is. We are raising money for Doctors Without Borders. 
Uh, Doctors Without Borders, or MSF, is an international medical humanitarian aid organization that works in over 70 countries around the world, providing life-saving medical humanitarian aid and speaking out about what they see in those areas. Their work aids people based solely on need, irrespective of race, religion, gender, or political affiliation. MSF is committed to safeguarding their patients' right to autonomy, uh, autonomy, uh, confidentiality, and informed consent. 90% of their staff is national, meaning they live locally and are from the country they work in. MSF relies mainly on the generosity of individual donors, with over 90% of MSF's income coming from private donors giving small amounts. Thank you, everyone, for your incredibly kind donations. All right, friends, I'll have one more donation here. We have $25 from Miss Austin. Greetings from Germany. And with that, we are ready to go. Give it up, everyone, for Dagron with Pulse Man. 